supposed to be down at the bottom My bro told me go get on my god Don't you walk with God, you better not doubt him We're here with Coach Ro Russell And uh, back with Season 2, Episode 1 yeah, But uh, how you doing, Coach? I'm doing pretty good, man. Just uh, just keeping busy, you know, trying to figure this whole thing out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, so yeah. So my my, my first question is, um, you know, most people know you as a coach, but how were you as a youngster? You know, were you into ball? Did you always knew that you were going to be a coach? So so so, how are you as a, as a, as a young kid? Well, as a young kid, um, you know, coming from Jamaica, when I was younger. Um, I was the only black kid in the white neighborhood, so I played hockey when I was younger. And um, when I switched over to basketball, then that's where my training and passion for basketball came because I was older and I had to catch up to the rest of the guys. So that's when I started, you know, the whole process of training and and and, and being a student in the game and all that kind of stuff. Did you always knew you're gonna go into coaching, or did it no, just kind of fell in your lap? It kind of fell in my lap because I, I was already training and and coaching when I was young. Um, you know, I was a, I was a coaching prodigy, and uh, I wanted to be a chiropractor. And uh, it was too much years; it was like nine years to be a chiropractor. So I was like, man, forget that. And then after yeah. coaching situation came up in the states first, and then in Canada and so forth. So. Um, it was like that. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so, 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 yeah, let's take a little further. So where did the vision come for grassroots basketball? Because, you know, at that time, there wasn't really too much AAU in, in Canada. So, 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 yeah, where, where did that vi- the vision come from? And, and, and why did you want to start, uh, you know, grassroots basketball? Well, growing up in Jena, and seeing, you know, kids uh, turn the wrong way and don't have the, the guidance and the mentorship to, you know, do positive things in the community. And yet really promising young men to just needed that guidance. Um, I decided at a young age that I wanted to, you know, um, use basketball as a tool to draw kids in because they love basketball. They're in the outdoor courts, they're in the gyms, all that stuff. So if I could pull them in, then I could uh, use in basketball, then I could, you know, help them get education, um, get them focused and get them finishing school and doing their thing. So um, it was uh, it was to help the kids in the neighborhoods that, um, you know, um, you know, to be uh, productive uh, citizens in the community. And then it branched out from there. Right, right, right. And, and I, I know you're a man of faith. So, so how has that helped you on, on and off the court? Well, I, th- I think um, just having that, uh, that mentality of helping and, and, and working with and, and, and going to the houses and talking to the parents and, and just being that, that servant for those kids uh, has really helped me a lot and helped them in terms of growing and interacting and, and being there for the parents and those kind of things. And, uh, you know, it, it's helped me because it provided a, 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 a sort of a ministry uh, of where I can be able to instill really strong values to kids, no cussing, no fooling around, no this, no that, and then be able to, uh, you know, get them prepared for life, you know, whether it be in their career or college or whatever. So um, it's been a good um, marriage in that regard. Uh, okay. And you just said no, no cussing in your gym so as a coach do you um or let me say this is it is it hard to not cuss and still get the best out of kids because I know most coaches they do cuss and you know that's their way of you know coaching but you know how how do how do you what do you think about that I think that um once you become a veteran You can find other words and other techniques to get the best out of kids, to get them, you know, triggered and and to to react and and to, to, to get them, get into them and all that stuff. So over the years, I've been able to learn those kind of techniques to do so. So, um, you know, I I don't need to cuss, 
in order to get kids to go hard and run and get my point across and all those kind of things. So, um, you know, um, I, I, you know, I instill those values to the kids, no cussing to the coaches. They also now have to learn new techniques and ways of, of being able to get kids to go hard without having to cuss. So it, it's a growth thing for everybody. Okay. So what would, what would be your best technique to get the kids triggered to play at the highest level? Well, the, you know, obviously, you know, you raise your voice. Obviously, you do push-ups and sit-ups and burpees and all those things. So um, making them having, knowing that every time they cuss, they get called out and they have to do some kind of form of disciplinary action for it. So that's the biggest uh, thing that, that I do in regards to that. And, um, you know, there, there's, there's, you know, you use other words and stuff that, you know, that aren't deemed cussing uh, to, to motivate them as well. Okay. Uh, why, why do they call you the Rev? They call me the Rev because I, I, I'm very strong uh, in faith and, and, and uh, spiritualism and, and uh, you know, I don't you know, mess around and I, I run a strong program and I, I'm always trying to uh, bring peace and love and, and, and all that stuff together and, and trying to work with kids. So I, I'm different than most coaches in terms of cussing, in terms of behavior, going to parties, clubs, all that stuff. I don't do none of that stuff. So um, based on who I am, my, you know, my personality, my character, you know, they, they, they start calling me the Rev. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, my next question is what made you start uh Crestwood Prep in uh in Canada? Um six years ago, um the opportunity came my way where this private school because a lot of kids were going to the States, which is fine, but not all the time it's a perfect situation. You know, sometimes it doesn't work out great. So me not being there to see how everything is and I know exactly how it should be run um there's a great opportunity for me to go to this private school and start it up and bring some guys there and 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 start to build it and and, and create that kind of prep mentality and prep program there so um it, it was a good to, to go to a private school where the kids are more focused you have a private school education and, and it's a little bit different than a uh, actually, it's a lot different than a public school, you know, in terms of how many people are there and kids just running the mock all over. It's more structured, more, you know, there's more supervision and, and, and you know, you, we were able to um, build a program over the last six years. Mm, wow, wow. Okay. So, uh, since, since the since the school is in Canada, is, is it better for a kid to stay in Canada or go to the States? Because well, I, 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 I know there there would be more exposure and maybe playing the games like McDonald's and the Jordan Classic, which would help them get to the NBA, you know, down the road. So, you know, how, how does that work? Yeah, well, basically, other than playing in the McDonald's game, you can actually you can actually play in the Jordan game and the other games that they have out there based on even if you're in Canada, they will choose you. So, um, you know, traveling to the States every month, for a showcase event, you know, is able to give the kids exposure, having college coaches come up to the practices and games and everything. And with the OSBA league, which is a very strong league, the kids can get some pretty good tape and, and good competition to, to, to fit that, you know? So, um, you know, now you're at a position now where you don't have to go to the States. You could, if you want to, if, every, if everything's set up and you do your homework and you feel real comfortable about everything it has, but you could stay in the States. Like, for instance, Elijah Fisher has stayed in Canada the whole time and he's yeah. able to be ranked one, two and get all these offers and all these recognition and, and all this exposure. So it, it's shown that, you know, you can, if you run a really, really strong program, you could do it in Canada. You know, it's still, you know, some kids go to the States, but you could do it in Canada. Okay. Uh, speaking of Elijah Fisher, I was going to ask that as the last question, but um, what school do you think might be the best fit for him? I know he's going to choose soon, right? So Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, um, we're not sure. We're still going through the process to see what he chooses, but he wants to get to know the coach, get to know the team, and make sure it's that perfect school because Elijah's like a hybrid guard. 
He's he's like a LeBron James play the one, the two, the three, sometimes post up on a bigger guy and mid post. And so he wants that that kind of coach that will allow him to just do what he needs to do on the court rather than, you know, um, restrict him from being able to handle it, push the ball, go attack the basket, switch on screens, post up inside, be on the wing, whatever. So he, we got to see what coach will allow him to do all those things, you know? So there's some, there's time to do all that. We don't have to rush it. You know what I mean? We want to get to know the coach and know what he thinks and watch the games go on and see how he deals with his players and all that stuff because you want you want to make a perfect situation. You don't want to just go to LSU like Ben Simmons did and it was a you know it wasn't a great situation. He just went there because it was a really good visit. He, you know, the, the coach told him all these things and and then he went there and it wasn't the right fit. So we want to be able to, you know, be meticulous and be thorough with it to to make sure it's the, the perfect situation. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Um. So, so what's the difference between Canadian and American uh, um, high school and college players? Because yeah, I, I think, I think that, you know, in, in, in grown with those kids, like it's life or death. Basketball is life or death for them. They, mm-hmm. they view it as like, I, it's, I, I, I have to do everything I got to do to go to the NBA. I got to do everything I got to do to go to college. Whereas in Canada, it's like, if I go, I go. If I don't, I don't, you know? And so you have to adopt that American mentality of like focus and being driven and being hungry and and going, going for it all. You know what I mean? So that's the biggest difference I've seen over the years and uh, AAU and all that stuff helps to get the kids on that track of wanted it all and, and, and having that mentality. So um, AU is a big thing to help these kids to learn and see and, and understand what it's all about. Okay. And some coaches, you know, they say um, the kids down there in, in America, um, they lift, they start lifting early. Is that, is, is that That's part true. of it too? They lift, they lift um, from the eighth grade, ninth grade, you know, they have strength conditioning. So that's a big part of it. That's why you see the guys are big, strong and athletic because they they value and they understand strength conditioning at a younger age where in Canada, they don't see it. They don't have it in a regular high school program. You know, they might have a weight class once a day. I mean, once a week and that's it. But um, now we're starting to have prep programs it, it instill those things into kids in terms of having strength conditioning in, in their program. So it's, 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 it's changing, it's changing and it's getting to that point where um, we're getting closer and closer to Americans. Okay. All right. Cool. Yep. Yeah. You're right. I mean, we're getting better and better, but you know, still gotta close the gap though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and that's what we're doing. That's why we're trying yeah. to build new guys. Um, you know, mentor guys to, to take the torch and, and build their program. That's why you've seen a lot more prep schools pop up in Ontario now that guys are younger guys are more um, vibrant and, and hungry and, and, and they're educated from mentors. So now they're adding the strength conditioning and they're training from September and they're traveling and they're, you know, having a schedule and they're doing all the things that, um they're supposed to do so i think that uh you know uh, each year you know we'll we'll close the gap Uh, so what are you doing with your players in terms of uh, mental health and and strengthening their their mental game um i think uh, uh watching tape and having workshops and and having speakers come in to speak to the guys and and those kind of things and, and having more individual meetings with the guys where they talk about, you know, stuff at home, stuff with school, with basketball, they're, you know, the things that, you know, they really think about. So I'm um, having that close relationship with the kids help a lot to understand what they're about to, you know, be able to give them advice and give them help in terms of uh, what's going on with their life. So, um, you know, being close with them and being, you know, really tight with the guys and make them feel comfortable it is a big thing with that whole nine. All right, cool, cool. Um, you know, 
I, I know you're the godfather of Canada basketball and, uh, you know, you started a pipeline of kids going to the NBA from Canada. Um, so, so, so what are the like key, um, points for preparing, uh, guys to go to the pros? Um, well, the, the biggest thing, first of all, is you have to have the mentality. You need that mentality to say, no matter what, I want to go, I want to get there. That's what I want to be. That's where I want to get there. Then from there, you're willing to do whatever it is, whether it be strength conditioning, training, traveling, whatever you got to do, you're going to get there. And then um, having a, a great college career in terms of starting off really good in college, you know, um, finding the, great, the right fit, the perfect fit for you and having the confidence that when you get there, you, you get going right away. When you get in, you, you make it happen. You put it in and, and you, you get the job done. You know what I mean? Because scouts are watching, people are watching, and you got to be able to perform to be able to be seen by these scouts to be recognized as the next pro. So, you know, it's, it's that mentality first and mm. confidence. Uh, it has to be there as well. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, so, so what are your thoughts on the new bill being passed, uh, the NIL? I, I think that uh, it, it's it's a really good thing. Finally, you know, finally we get <laughs> the guys get a chance to make to monetize what their own name, what they could sell, and what 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 they could endorse, what they could make for their own. You know, so it's finally that point because it was like that 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 meant you know like, I don't want to say it, but it was that you know it was that slave mentality of uh, you know uh, whatever you do. You know, it's ours. You know, look, look how much money Zion Williamson made a few years ago when he was making that run at Duke. You know, he probably would have made like $20 million if he, he was able to monetize all that. And he had to give it back to the university and NCAA and all that stuff. So it, it's about time that, you know, for what you bring to the table and what you do, you get rewarded for it, you know. And now guys don't have to rush to deal under the table with agents and they don't have to do all these different things because now they can make money on their own and, mm -hmm. and they can go through that process of wait until they get there because they're making money right now. So it, it's a really, really good thing. Yeah. So like if a kid comes into your gym or you're trying to recruit a kid, how, how do you know that kid is going to be great? Cause it seems like you have, you have good eyes, you know, yeah, I, I, I've been I've been, uh, um, you know, given that that gift of, of of knowing, you know, how good a kid could be by him dribbling the ball, handling the ball, shooting the ball. And, um, you know, you watch his body, you know, his confidence and, uh, you know, just just the way he approaches things with confidence and, and and with that mentality. And then from there, it's a matter of work, work ethic. You know, does he have that work ethic that whatever he needs to get? When I first saw Elijah Fisher at grade five, he had that confidence and that mentality that you you know that, that does he have that work ethic? Does he go at halftime and dribble the ball? And does he want to always play? And does he is, is he always engaged? And from there, if they have that work ethic, then they can get better on their jump shot and their ball handling, their moves, their footwork, their uh, anything that they have. You can see that by the work ethic. You'll, you'll get that. You know what I'm saying? So um, you, you try to get the kids as young as possible so they have years to develop. Um, you know, but it, it's it's it, it's their, their 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 passion for the game. Their passion for the game. They'll be able to get where they need to get to. Okay, that 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 will separate them from the pack. Yeah, passion. that'll separate them. Yeah, because some kids they like basketball, you know, when it's convenient, when it's right. But some guys just want it all the time, all the time. They just want to dribble all the time. They want to play all the time. They want to get working all the time. And those are the guys that are different. And those are the guys that that make it. Right, right, right. Um, I'm I'm sure you had a lot of offers from NCAA. And even the NBA, um, you know, as as you know, uh, coaching or 
coaching assistant, whatever, whatever the case may be. But uh, how come you haven't taken an offer and stayed with grassroots? I, I guess because um, I had a lot of opportunities to go to the next level. But it's like you 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 want to you want to see all these kids like a, a kid comes into the program and he has years to go to develop to get to that point and you want to see him through you know what I mean you want to see that kid you know because you've been working with him guiding him and you want to make sure that he gets to that level and uh, it kind of keeps you back because you're saying who's going to take over who has that passion who has that 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 mentality that's that 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 sacrifice that they're gonna you know, go to the ends with these kids and, and you're trying to find that guy to say, okay, I'll put you in place and then I can move on. And I haven't found that guy yet. So I still got to do it until I find that guy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I, I'm about to say a name, but I don't want to say it on camera, but it's all good. <laughs> uh, he, he knows who it is, but... um. Yeah, uh, my last question is, um, what, what is your best moment as a coach? And you pick, you, know, you only can pick one. Yeah, th- that's easy. It, it's uh, 08 in Vegas where we were, um, we won the championship in Vegas. Ah. And, uh, you know, we had Tristan Thompson, Corey Joseph, Dwight Powell, Brady Helsler, Mike Cabongo, you know, Dwight Powell, all those guys. And we, we showed that, you know, we could beat the best in America. For mm-hmm. that given day, that given summer, we, we were the best team. We were ranked number one in America. And, uh, you know, that's where it showed Americans that there's pros in Canada because several of those guys became pros and we were able to win the championship. So, uh, you know, we we're on USA Today and TSN and all that stuff. So that's my greatest moment to be part of that history to show that Canadians could be better than Americans that that weekend, that you know, that time frame, And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that, that comes to mind right away. Oh, eight. Okay. That's when things kind of turned. Yes. That's what things changed. And they start coaches start coming up to Canada to see guys and, and see more players and those kind of things. And, uh, and, and guys start to believe that, Hey, I can go to the league. I can make it now. I don't have to just want to get a scholarship and that's it. I can go further than that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. Uh, yeah, just give all your info. You know, if if, if yeah, you want it, to. it's uh, at Twitter. It's uh um at uh Coach Ro Russell. Um, our grassroots is we are grassroots, and uh, you know, just go from there. So um, you know, thanks for having me, and uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it was fun. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. Um. Episode two is going to be an XWNBA player, so stay tuned for that, and uh, see you guys next time. All right, peace.